Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at one spin with Nikolai Tashinsky, who's going to talk today about how to move from specification to sign-off. So Nikolai, why don't you explain the entire flow here? In a verification flow, everything starts from requirement specification, from which a verification plan is derived by some verification engineers. For this verification plan, engineers, verification engineers or designers are writing test benches which are afterwards run and debug and this goes back into a verification plan in which the items are ticked and the design is ready to sign off. Nothing ever goes that smoothly though, right? Because you've always got engineering change orders, you've got uh, new requirements that come in, you've got changes that happen somewhere along the way in a design that's fairly complex. Yes, indeed. So all the time it, it's more like an agile process so requirements a first draft of the design is sent to verification meanwhile the some modifications are introduced in the design the requirements are getting changed the specification afterwards result uh, the verification plan derived from this new specification results in new test benches that needs to be written run debugged and then so on so this is why it requires some uh, not a single iteration in order to achieve a sign-off. How do you get from requirements to the verification plan? So getting from requirements to the verification plan is not a fully automated process. So usually you get from the designers, you get a DT spec, the design specification, which is consists of papers, items of describing the full functionality of the design. And if the design incorporates some standard uh, interfaces, like proto standard protocols like AMBA and so on, so you also get these uh, standard specs. So yeah, and you have a bunch of files that then goes and gets analyzed and by the verification engineers, for which the uh, verification engineer that develops a verification plan can use can be assisted by a tool so this is can be assisted by a tool tool assist or manually and what is the result of, of this work is results in a sort of a verification plan where some features are described this feature can have sub features and for each of these, there is a verification goal that needs to be achieved. It can be multiple of them, and it also continues with multiple features, and it goes on. Sorry. Uh, I mean, these are really two different processes, though. Do they come together at the end? I see on your diagram they do, but how does that actually happen? So once uh, the verification engineer decides what part goes to simulation and what parts goes to formal, for these two approaches, test matches are developed by the engineers, then they are run for both for simulation and formal, resulting in uh, coverage databases from collected from the simulation runs and coverage databases collected from the formal runs. And then these two databases are merged in a mix one that can later uh, be reused in order to annotate the bullets in the verification plan you have in place and resulting in an annotated verification plan that can go to sign off. Well, how do you actually know that your uh, uh, goal is reached by the, the verification plan? That you've got everything all ironed out and it's going to work as planned? Uh, how do we know is, uh, so for each verification goal, you develop a test bench and this test bench is intended to verify it. But how do you know that your test bench is of good quality and uh, what parts of the design does it exercise and or did you write good quality uh, stimuli for your test bench this is all about the quality of the test bench right exactly so uh, we have to answer first these three questions like did i write enough stimuli uh, what is being exercised in the design under uh, verification and are my checks of good quality. So let's assume that uh, we have a piece of RTL. That it's a simple one having an if branch saying like if enable, signal A gets set. 
Yeah. And for this piece of RTL, a verification engineer writes an assertion that is intended to check this functionality. So I have the assertion written. The assertion result collected from a formal tool has a hold status and a witness. So this means it's reachable and it's proven by the formal tool. So for this piece of RTL I have an assertion. And now I'm trying to answer like these three questions. So what I get now is a, I'm assisted by a coverage tool. In our case it's quantify, so we have the coverage tool here. This is the coverage tool. The RTL and the set of assertions are the input to it. And we now try to answer these three questions. So coverage tool answers these questions like if my piece of code activated and is my piece of code observed. Uh, what's activated, what's observed, what do those, those, those terms actually mean here? So basically when you talk about activated and observed is related to the assertions that I have written for my code is like is the assertion activating this piece of code while checking it? So yes, so basically if the answer of the activation is a null, then means that I have no check which is sad, and you need to sit and think. If the question is like, okay, my assertion, my assertion I have written for my piece of code is activating this statement, then yeah, it's activated. And this brings me to observation question. What does it mean about observation when I ask myself the question, is this piece of code observed by my assertion? This means that what if I change this uh, piece of code, will my assertion fail? And let's say that the cover still returns that this piece of code is not observed. This leads me to that check. So I am again sad and I have to think about it. Well, if the coverage tool comes back and says that, okay, you have activated and your statement you want to check with your assertion is observed, this means that I have a really good quality check and I have enough. So Nikolai, tie this all up for us. So yeah, remember from the first one we had this verification loop and in the fully verification process so for example you have a design that you need to verify and what would you do with that design first you will do like an early inspection in order to, and use some auto checks which formal tool provides in order to get rid of the low hanging fruits so and once you have a verification plan developed from the specs and you start to write checks formal assertions covers in order to Tick the items in your verification plan your, to cover these verification goals mentioned before. So the input here is you have the verification plan which you want to cover. You write a set of assertions which in this phase is called bug hunting, so you do bug hunting now. And once you have a set of assertions that are consistent, you run the coverage tool on top of it in order to see how much did you cover in your design and to give a sense on how aware are you in your verification process. Once you wrote a bunch of assertions, a set of assertions, and you at the same time are completing the verification plan. So you're writing assertions, you check the functionality, you're taking items in your verification plan. And these two phases, like bug hunting and completing verific the verification plan, are kind of overlapping. But the essence here is that you have a verification plan you want to cover, and every time you have a set of assertions that is consistent, you run coverage tool on top of it in order to get a sense where are you in the, flow, in the process. 
Now let's say that you already covered all your uh, the functionality which is described in your verification plan but the cover tool reports you that you still have coverage holes. What do you do in this case? You develop more assertions or you analyze the design and on the additions you run the coverage tool in order to see if you cover that. And once you cover the verification plan of the entire uh, design with your checks you have a review phase and this review phase is more like the, did I write good assertions is maybe some assertions are overlapping and need to be uh, compressed into a single one and so on and once you did this uh, quality assurance on the checks you have already you run the coverage tool on top of it in order to see if did I alter my coverage overall coverage so by the time you're done with this, you have enough confidence that this thing is going to be manufacturable and work. Yes, so what coverage brings in the entire verification flow is it brings you confidence, it uh, can it, uh, hit, hint where are you over constraining some code if you have bad, uh, bad checks as well. So yeah, using coverage tool in your verification process is a must. And, and this isn't just optional anymore, right? This is an absolute requirement to get a, a chip out the door. Yes, because coverage tool brings you confidence, spots you where I pay bad, if you had bad checks, over constraint, some code, and yeah, it's a must. And having such a place, such a verification flow in place is a requirement from the beginning. Nikolai Tushinsky, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.